Well, for more, I'm joined by Christina Chi. She is a professor at Washington State University's School of Hospitality Business Management. Professor, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, good, e good evening, Elaine. Thank you for having me. It's actually Francis. I, I'm filling in today for Elaine. But um, let's talk about this mid-autumn festival. Uh, it takes place every year, but never under such challenges. We're talking about COVID outbreaks popping up in the country. We're talking about uh, the heat waves and droughts. Can you give us a sense of how government lockdowns and other measures are affecting travel and tourism during the festival? Yeah, um, the travel and tourism market uh, does not look wealthy for this year's uh, mid-autumn festival holidays. Um, as you mentioned, currently with the COVID flare-up in uh, various parts of China, and dozens of cities are again experiencing full or partial lockdown. And in fact, the National Health Commission is advising the public to uh, stay put locally and avoid an interprovincial travel during the uh, mid-autumn festival holidays. And many cities reimposed uh, strict entry rules to discourage out-of-town visitors. And cities are also placing uh, capacity limits on uh, uh, different venues and tourist and attractions. And um, another factor that impacted tourism, and as you mentioned, is the heat wave and sweeping across China. Uh, in the summer, a large parts of China are enduring temperatures of uh, more than 40 degrees Celsius, which is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, some tourist attractions were closed for the safety of tourists and, and staff, and others were closed due to a disappearing landscape, such as uh, dried up uh, waterfalls. Um, and uh, the famed riverfront in Shanghai, uh, the bond went dark, and in order, you know, uh, the city is trying to save um, electricity. Um, because of the COVID travel restrictions and also the shorter three day holiday break, uh, the dominant travel train uh, would be a short distance and a drive to family travel, um, such as day tours uh, within the city. Uh, short-term ex excursions to neighboring cities, uh, these are uh, popular choices. Uh, Mid-autumn festival is a time for the family to uh, get together, to appreciate the moon and enjoy the food. So uh, festival theme activities are highly uh, sought after, uh, such as uh, moon viewing and on night cruises, and also celebrations in cultural parks and botanical gardens. And another, um, as the weather, uh, we talk about heat wave in the summer, but now the weather start to cool down. Uh, so camping uh, start to become popular um, again. Um, camping has actually gained a significant steam uh, during the uh, pandemic and in China, especially uh, among the uh, younger generations. Uh, Professor, I want to talk about uh, really quickly, we don't have a whole lot of time left, um, the overall tourism industry. I mean, how is it faring? Has it recovered um, a little bit from, from COVID? How, how is it doing right now? Uh, China's tourism industry has seen ups and downs in the past three years. Uh, its tourism bounced back quickly in the second half of 2020 and the first half of 2021 when the uh, virus was, uh, was largely under control in China. Uh, but the more infectious Delta and Omicron variant have uh, greatly disrupted the tourism recovery uh, in China in recent months. Uh, travel restrictions and also the risk of uh, lockdowns have undermined uh, people's willingness and confidence to travel. But as I talked about it before in um, CGTN, I believe the industry will make a comeback um, because people have an in innate desire to travel. Uh, many actually predicted and hope that COVID-related travel re restrictions will be eased and may even uh, be removed in China in 2023, uh, assuming the uh, COVID situations uh, remain stable. Uh, once that happens, uh, the travel industry would enjoy a, a robust uh, recovery. That's certainly something to look forward to. Professor Christina Chi with Washington State University, thank you so much. Thank you.